Manchester City complete a historic treble with victory over Inter Milan in the Champions League final. Rodri the match winner as City win the Champions League for the first time and become the sixth English side to win European football's biggest prize. Pep Guardiola underlines his status as one of the greatest managers of all time after sealing a second treble. Good evening and welcome to Sky Sports News on a famous night for Manchester City. 15 years after Sheikh Mansour bought the club, City finally lift the European Cup and they've become just the second team in English football history to win the treble following in the footsteps of Manchester United in 1999. <laughs> Delight then for the fans in Manchester as Rodri scored the goal that sealed a first Champions League trophy for Manchester City. And over to Milan at the San Siro, the mood less than joyous. Inter fans devastated that they couldn't ruin Manchester City's treble. Well, after near misses and absurd exits, Manchester City are finally European champions and treble winners. It was Rodri who scored the only goal in a 1-0 win over Inter Milan. We'll be speaking to our chief reporter, Carve Solicol, very shortly indeed. But before we do so, former Manchester City player Keith Curl has been watching it all agonising 90 minutes. Um, but in terms of how this match was won, you, you said it might come down to a mistake, but it came down to a clinical finish from one of their most dependable players. Yeah, um, I think he's had a fantastic season, as have um, all the players uh, at City. I think uh, I think everybody will say now it wasn't the final that they expected. I think they uh, credit will go to Inter Milan because I think they made it very very difficult. Uh, City will be slightly disappointed. Pep will be slightly disappointed because of the standards that he sets about some of the the, the passes that went astray and made the game more difficult for them. But City showed a resolve today um, that. Finding, finding another way to win. Yeah, you've got to say, Edison uh, has won in the Cup with the two, two fantastic saves. Well, I mean, we should talk about that, shouldn't we? Because uh, uh, in terms of taking chances, Rodri took his when he was given that opportunity. It opened up for him. He, he curled it around the two Interman in his way. But there were some great chances after that for Inter Milan, weren't there? Again, if, if, uh, and it's not just City. I think any team uh, are fragile... Uh, or can be uh, frail where balls coming in the box and there's a willingness and the opposition's getting numbers into the box and that was shown today. Every time the ball is going into wide areas, I'm saying you've got to stop the cross. You've got to stop the cross because uh, it's, it's a goal-scoring opportunity. Uh, Edison today came out, uh, made two great saves, took the pressure off when was needed again and I didn't think he started the game the best. Well, well I was going to say, he was jittery. I mean, he, he made um, a, a little bit of a kind of, you know, un, uncertain start, shall we say. And, you know, I remember he, he booted the ball into the gods and, and, and it was, you know, he was, he was playing passes that perhaps weren't as secure as he normally is expected to make. Um, but in terms of the, you know, keeping cool heads, yeah. who were the other players that you looked to who did actually deliver that? And once the City settled down, they were the ones who led on the pitch. Yeah, I've got to say, um, Gundogan, again, uh, he's a player that can go slightly under uh, un unnoticed, but he, does, he makes good decisions. Uh, yeah. Silver. Apart from scoring volleys in cup finals. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I know what you mean. I was glad he runs when, the game, yeah. but in his own quite understated yeah, way. Uh, I was glad when Carl Walker came on at the end. He gives me that assurance with the... And I think he gives other players that assurance with his recovery runs uh, and his, his dynamic pace again. But no, again, I think there's um, there's a team ethic. There's a, there's, a, there's a togetherness, not only of the team, of the football club, which I think is vitally important. Everybody is on the same page. Well, you mentioned Edison there, you mentioned Rodri. We should also mention two players that went off the field of play before the 90 minutes. Mm. Kevin De Bruyne, crucially yeah. in that first half. How much might that have rocked City? And Inter, at one point, felt like they were in the game and maybe could have made even more of a contest yeah. because of that. And, and I think it happened just as Kevin went off. I think that gave Inter a lift, thinking, well, well one of the pieces of jigsaw uh, from, the, from the City team is now missing. Um, but again, Phil Foden, um, 
he's not a bad replacement, is he? Mm. So, so when he came back in, but again, uh, Kevin De Bruyne missing gave them gave them a lift. Then City needed to to readjust, and they, uh, I think they did uh, as it happens. Phil Foden could have scored, could yes. have made the difference. Had a great chance, didn't he? Threw on goal, Andre Nana with a comfortable save away to his left, uh, and also just a word for John Stones because you know he's had this incredible. You know, a different season where he's transitioned into this sort of hybrid position in between a sort of a centre back and, and, and a midfielder. Uh, how do you feel that this? What will this mean to him, especially given that that context? Excellent. I think he's probably the one. Um, the last five, six minutes of the game, I wanted John Stones on the pitch <laughs> because you know the, his bravery, his personality, his determination, his aerial ability, his physical physicality in the box. You want the John Stones in the team. You don't want him stood in the dugout watching the last couple of minutes. You know because he would go and put his head on it. Um, but again, first half, and this is just a personal opinion. I think he played a little bit too far forward because then, the, then on the transitions, um, too quickly into were able to get three v three, four v three at times, and you're saying, well. John, you're going to be a defensive midfield player, not an attacking midfield player. Stay right there, Keith. We'll come back to you in a moment. Let's go live now to Istanbul and to the Turk Olympic Stadium and join our chief reporter, Karbe Solokol. Uh, Karbe, what about what this result means? The magnitude of this win, this triumph, and to finally lift that trophy that they've so craved? Yes, I mean, if you're a Manchester City supporter, it does not get better than this. Manchester City have become only the second uh, English team to win the treble. They have emulated what their great rivals, Manchester United, did back in 1999. And you have to keep in mind that when Manchester United won the treble 24 years ago, Manchester City were actually in the third tier. Uh, a couple of days after United won the treble, they played in the... Uh, the Division one, I think it was called in those days, uh, which was basically the third level playoff against Gillingham. And they were 2-0 down with a few minutes left. So it's been an incredible journey for some of these Manchester City supporters who've been there for the whole time, back to when uh, City used to play at Main Road, uh, back to when uh, Manchester City were almost a joke. People uh, used to refer to Main Road as the theatre of a comedy. I, I used to remember that phrase being used on the radio when I used to listen to radio commentaries from Main Road. But look, an incredible achievement, a perfect season uh, as far as City supporters are concerned. Uh, they won the league. Arsenal pushed them a lot of the way, but in the end, they won the title pretty comfortably. FA Cup final as well. They didn't really have to be at their best to beat Manchester United. And this evening, I think it was a little bit harder than a lot of people thought it was going to be because I thought Inter Milan uh, played very, very well indeed. But you never got the feeling that Inter were going to win this game because Manchester City just looked so dangerous going forward. And yet again, you see the strength in depth they've got on the bench with players like Phil Foden uh, coming in. And you have to say that over the 90 minutes, it was fully deserved. And over the course of the season, uh, the treble fully deserved. Let's talk about that word because it's been the one, the T word, that Manchester City fans have been hoping for for such a long time. And for Pep Guardiola, the second time he's achieved it after doing it with Barcelona in 2009. What's the significance of this for Pep? Well, look, everybody knows already that he, he's the best coach in the world. Uh, I mean, what he does with players, the way he innovates, the way he improves already brilliant players uh, is quite remarkable. And uh, the funny thing about the technical area at this stadium behind me, it was so big uh, that Pep Guardiola at times almost seemed like he was taking part in the game. Both him and Simone Inzaghi were involved from the very first second to the last second. He was animated. He was arguing with his players. He was urging the Manchester City supporters to turn up the volume and back their supporters more. But I don't think Pep Guardiola's reputation rested on what happened here tonight. Even if City had lost, I'm pretty sure that they would have gone and won the European Cup at some point under Pep Guardiola because they are just such a great side, such a great squad. And in Pep Guardiola, of course, they have one of the greatest managers of all time. And how much relief will there be amongst uh, the people who own Manchester City? Because this is the reason they brought in Pep Guardiola. They finally got the pot they won. 
Yes, I mean, I think it was very significant that Sheikh Mansour, uh, the Manchester City owner, was here uh, to watch this side for only the second time uh, since he bought the club in 2008. And I think he watched them back in 2010 uh, when they beat Liverpool 3-0 in a Premier League game. He had not watched Manchester City in the flesh since then, except, I think, for a couple of uh, friendlies. Uh, in the UAE, but he was here uh, this evening. I'm sure he'll be very delighted. And you have to keep in mind as well, looking back all those years when he did buy Manchester City, I think he only spent about £200 million. And at the moment, there are people trying to buy Manchester United for £5 billion. So what he has done is remarkable. Of course, uh, lots of managers before Pep Guardiola have won the title at City as well. I'm thinking of Roberto Mancini. I'm thinking of Manuel Pellegrini as well. Uh, but Pep Guardiola has really taken them uh, to another level. And now they joined that select group of English clubs uh, who have lifted the European Cup. I'm thinking, of course, of Liverpool. I'm thinking of Manchester United. I'm thinking of Chelsea. I'm thinking of Aston Villa. I'm thinking of Nottingham Forest, who did it twice under uh, Brian Clough. And let's not forget Celtic as well, because they were the first British side uh, to lift the European Cup as well. So a dream come true uh, for City supporters. Dream come true for the players. Uh, Pep Guardiola, his coaching staff, and, of course, the people who run and own Manchester City. And in some ways, especially as far as personnel has been concerned, Carve, it's been a season of transition for City, letting the likes of Zinchenko and Gabriel Jesus go, and then, of course, Raul Cancelo. But clearly, one of the key moves was bringing in Erling Haaland. 52 goals in all competitions this season, not on the score sheet tonight. But, I mean, you talk about taking City to another level. This is a man who's done exactly that, isn't he? It is. I mean, the impact he's had uh, on English football has been uh, incredible. And he didn't score tonight, as you mentioned. This is his longest ever goal drought in the Champions League. This is the first time he's gone three full games without scoring a goal. And I think uh, his goal scoring record at the end of this season has been pretty poor by his standards. I think he's only scored once in the past eight games. But 52 goals uh, in 53 games. I mean, he has done exactly what Pep Guardiola wanted from him. His impact has been incredible. I know there were a few doubts at the beginning of this season. People were scratching their heads and wondering whether he could fit into Manchester City's style of play, whether he was Pep Guardiola's kind of player. Well, he silenced all those critics because he's had an incredible season and he didn't score tonight, but he was still a real handful uh, for Inter's defence. The way he stretches their three centre-backs, creating space uh, for some of uh, City's other players uh, to do what they're good at. I've just got to say a word as well uh, about Inter Milan, because a lot of people didn't expect them to do very much at all uh, this evening. But I thought they played very, very well indeed. And I think the key moment for them, I think it was in the 88th minute, right at the end of the game, where they had that golden chance that fell to Romelo Lukaku. He had a free header just a couple of yards out. All he had to do was place that header either side of Edison. But unfortunately, he headed it down straight at Edison. If that had gone in, if that had gone in, there's a very, very good chance that the game would have ended 1-1 and we would be playing extra time at the moment. So I know City are going to dominate all the headlines, rightly so. An incredible achievement uh, to win the treble. Uh, but let's not forget Inter Milan as well, because I thought they played exceptionally well this evening. And what about in terms of the... <laughs> The, the state of play in Europe as a whole, in the last five Champions League finals, three of them have been won by English sides. Liverpool in 2019, Chelsea in 2021 and Manchester City this time around. And we've also had three runners-up who have been English as well. Tottenham in 2019, City in 21 and Liverpool last season when they lost to Real Madrid in Paris. Is there any, uh, at all, any discussion of the fact that being the Premier League is the strongest league in the world, but also the, the English sides are now regularly, consistently... Uh, you know, the very top teams in this competition as well. Yeah, we're going almost back to the uh, sort of 80s, uh, when uh, late 70s and 80s, when uh, English clubs used to dominate the European Cup, as it was called in those days. Yes, of course, 
you speak to anybody uh, in football and they will tell you that when it comes to uh, the world leagues, the Premier League is by far uh, the strongest, the most watched, the most popular, the richest league as well. And quite a lot of the other big clubs in Europe are scratching their heads wondering what they can do uh, to compete with these big uh, Premier League clubs. A lot of people, of course, watch the kind of football that Manchester City play. They admire it. They admire what Pep Guardiola has done. But at the same time, they look at it and think, we just can't compete with this. We cannot uh, spend the same kind of money that uh, clubs like Manchester City, Manchester United, Chelsea have been spending. But I think it would be a mistake uh, to characterise uh, Manchester City's achievements under Pep Guardiola as being just down to money. Yes, of course, uh, a lot of money has been spent at Manchester City. I think since uh, Sheikh Mansour bought the club, their net spend has been more than any other club in the world. But in the past few years, they have been bringing that down. Other clubs like Manchester United have been spending uh, more money than them. But European clubs, you know, the aristocrats of European football, clubs like Barcelona, Real Madrid, uh, Juventus, even PSG financially at the moment cannot compete with not just Manchester City, but lots of other clubs in the Premier League as well. And that is uh, one of the reasons why people were going around trying to set up a European Super League, because they want to figure out a way to compete with the power of the Premier League. I think a lot of people will be hoping, look, we had phases in the past where, for instance, Serie A was the strongest league in the world. Uh, then we had La Liga dominating with Real Madrid and the great Barcelona sides. And now it's the turn uh, of the Premier League. At the moment, it looks like it's going to last forever. But who knows what's going to happen in the future? Carve, that cheer that you would have heard behind you is for the trophy lift. Manchester City and the squad are there on the podium and they have lifted that trophy. And the man with the cup in his hands is the Manchester City Club captain, Ilkay Gundogan. But perhaps, you know, not wanting to, to put any kind of downer on this, but obviously his future is very much uh, in question, isn't it? And, and it doesn't seem certain that he will be at the club beyond the summer. I don't think it's certain as far as Manchester City are concerned, as far as Pep Guardiola are concerned, uh, they want him to stay. Uh, but the problem they've got is that he's going to be out of contract and lots of other clubs want him as well. He's been linked with Arsenal. Uh, he's been linked with Barcelona. I've been reading reports that PSG would like to sign him as well. But look, let's not take anything away from this glorious moment in his career. He's behind me in that stadium, as you said, lifting the European Cup. I think if something can be organised between his representatives uh, and Manchester City, it would suit all parties if he was to sign uh, a new contract at Manchester City and prolong his stay at the club. Uh, that would be the end of a perfect season uh, for Ilkay Gundogan, I think, and also for Pep Guardiola, because he's made no secret of the fact that he wants Gundogan to stay. And just finally, as we as we see pictures now of, of the entire City backroom staff, everyone who works for the team, with the team, with those players, they're gathered around the trophy. I mean, it seems that they've created something so very special here, Carve. It is a bit of a dynasty, isn't it, when you think of five Premier Leagues in six seasons, now this domestic and European travel, which hadn't been done for 24 years. But how, <laughs> how do City follow this? And how do they match this level of intensity and success and attainment when it comes to next season and the seasons that follow. Well, look, I think the great sides uh, lift the European Cup more than once. There's no reason why this should be uh, the end of a cycle at Manchester City. Uh, Pep Guardiola has made it clear that he wants to stay at City for a long time. Uh, you know, clubs like Inter, for instance, have won uh, the European Cup three times. Liverpool have won it uh, six times. Uh, you know, Nottingham Forest won it twice. I'm sure Manchester City going forward are going to try and win the European Cup again and again and again. And there's no reason why they won't if they keep the same uh, nucleus of the squad they have in place, which I think they're going to. If Pep Guardiola stays, which he's definitely going to stay, the owners are not going to go anywhere. Uh, the chief executive, the director of football, are all people who work in perfect harmony uh, with Pep Guardiola. So, unfortunately, for City's rivals, their competition, I think this uh, dynasty in European football 
uh, is just beginning because you don't really have to have a very vivid imagination uh, to uh, imagine City lifting this trophy again and again and again. Kave Solikov, our chief reporter, live in Istanbul at the Ataturk Olympic Stadium. Thank you very much indeed for the moment. Well, uh, let's get some further reflections from the former Manchester City player, uh, Keith Curl, uh, who's still in the studio, just, just soaking up this, this moment, watching all of those celebrations, listening to, to what Kave had to say. Uh, what, in your mind, is the significance of this moment, of this triumph, finally, that European Cup for Manchester City that they've wanted for so long? Again, I think it's part of, uh, part of the club's journey, part of Pep and the club's journey. Two things that stood out to me. After the game, final whistle's gone. All the players and the staff, they're on and they're celebrating. The, the camera's cut to Pep and he's talking tactics with one of his coaches. He's just won the Champions League and he's talking tactics about the game. Then, when the, uh, when the players have lifted the cup and they're enjoying the celebrations, Pep takes a step aside and claps the players. He appreciates the work that they've done for him uh, but as well as it's that, that, that acknowledgement from the manager to the players and being prepared to say, well done, chaps, you've done what I needed you to do. That not only game in, game out throughout the season to win the treble. Uh, and he's prepared to stand there and applaud them. It's not always been the case that Pep Guardia has made the soundest decisions in these kind of matches before. We know about the, the defeat to Chelsea two years ago, yeah. those semi-final defeats as well, particularly the likes of Lyon in the COVID season, Monaco before as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, but what do you think he's got right this season when it's come to making those key decisions, both tactically and, and in terms of managing this squad? I think trust, which is um, it's probably a misunderstood word or overused word in football, trust and honesty. And I think he's got that in abundance with the players, it, with his relationship with the players and with the football club. Again, yeah, yeah, he's a coach. Players make mistakes. But coaches take the responsibility of players making mistakes. Now, if you go into a game and he has a game plan and it doesn't work, um, does that, is that a failure? No. Uh, his game plan on that day didn't work. Uh, he's an excellent manager. Uh, he's an excellent man manager. He's a, he's a, he's a, a coach and a manager that you, uh, that you think every player would love to play for. He's had those challenges, though, this season. So, for example, Joao Cancelo and obviously a, a clearly a fallout between player and coach or coaching staff. Or, you know, the, it was clear he needed to, to move on. Yeah. But then equally, there was, there was talk towards the end of the season about potentially relationship with Kevin De Bruyne because he wasn't starting as many games, not getting as many, as many minutes. How difficult is that to, to be able to manage that across a squad of such talent and so many players who all could walk into any other team? I've done it in a few interviews that I've had prior to, uh, well, not only to this game, to a few games. How he manages egos, players' egos. It's one of those, sign for me, sign for the football club, park your ego and leave it in the car park. When you come in, this is how we work. This is how I work as a manager. This is your expectations are. And I think those are laid out before a player even puts pen to paper. And when you think of what Manchester City have been sort of building and, and the momentum over the last few years, you know, reaching that Champions League final two seasons ago, now getting over the line and this domestic treble, how excited are you about what more could come? Because as Carver was saying, this doesn't need to be the end. Oh, it could just be the beginning. I don't, I don't think it will be the end. I think, again, I think there will be a journey for this football club, uh, for these players uh, and the management staff to go on that will see more and more consistent success. Are you expecting there to be many changes? I mean, Carve was saying there about keeping the nucleus of the squad. There has been some transition this season. Of course, they let the likes of Zinchenko and Gabriel Jesus go yeah. to Arsenal yeah. and also made good use of those players. Yeah, that's very much um, uh, Then, obviously, Juan Cancelo moving, but Haaland comes in. Do you expect there to be more of those fluctuations or do you think it is going to be a little bit of a quieter summer for City ahead? I think it will be quieter because you win the treble. Your foundations, your fundamentals of what you're looking for are in place. Yeah, there will be some players that haven't had the starts uh, that they, that they think their career will, uh, will, will merit or warrant uh, at this particular time. But again, it, I think it would probably be their choice. And right, so if you're playing and you're playing for a club that just won the treble and you haven't played games, uh, there's an incident you need to be playing. If you don't see your way getting into the team, there's one of those. Uh, you, you go and play football. Um, 
Keith, if you don't mind, we'd like to, you to stay with us for a little while longer yeah. as we continue to reflect on this, on this uh, domestic and European treble that's been completed now by Manchester City. But in the meantime, um, let's just give our audience a, a few more details on what happens next for Manchester City. So the squad will travel back to Manchester on Sunday afternoon. They'll be flying on a, a unique club liveried Etihad Airways, obviously, Boeing uh, 7879 Dreamliner. They will then celebrate uh, this historic achievement with an open-top bus parade through Manchester City Centre on Monday the 12th of June. So that's just in a couple of days' time. Um, and we have already heard from the Manchester City captain, Ilkay Gundogan, as part of, of this statement that Manchester City have released. He said this, This is a really proud moment for everyone at this football club. We work so hard every single day. We have wanted to win this trophy for so long. The Champions League is a beautiful competition. We're all incredibly happy to have won. This team deserves the highest recognition and winning the Champions League elevates us to the very top of the game. And to win the treble is something amazing. It is the ultimate achievement for any club team and we have done it. It reflects the quality we have in our squad, but it also shows how dedicated we are. Uh, I want to thank the Manchester City fans for their support this season. I can honestly say that we could have not have done this without them. They have been amazing and they deserve this moment. OK. So, Manchester City are European champions, finally, and treble winners. These are the scenes in Manchester at the Fan Zone. We'll have more reaction throughout the night. Stay with us. <laughs> 